In his 144 days aboard the International Space Station, Chris Hatfield captivated us in 140 characters. He brought what he saw from up there to nearly a million followers down here, and the tweeting hasn't stopped. Even as he's poked and prodded with tests, Hatfield is keeping us all up to date. Last night he posted another of the thousands of photos he took aboard the ISS, this one of the moon rising. And ever the science advocate, today he shared this group shot with researchers from a Canadian university. Hatfield's prolific use of Twitter just adds to the international attention he's getting. I reached him in Houston earlier today asking how he was dealing with this newfound celebrity status. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, just coming back to Earth is overloading enough. Just, just holding my head up is a bizarre new experience. You know, I haven't had to hold my head on top of my neck for five months. I've been living in a, in a cave. I haven't had the sun on my skin for five months. Um, just learning to walk, you know, that's enough. And yet on top of that, of course, uh, there were so many things happened over the last five months. It really piqued interest right around the world. Uh, the perspectives that we have up there, the things that are possible when you leave Earth, the, the ways you can see the planet, it's really uh, caused uh, what I think is a great interest in, in the capability that we've built. And so now I'm just trying to deal with it, try to prioritize it, um, trying to uh, answer the most pressing questions and, uh, and, but also trying to readapt myself and get myself back to being an Earthling again after what was really just a magnificent human experience. Now, you've been described as the best space salesman this country's ever seen, and you showed such a deft touch in your use of social media. How much of that was a planned strategy, and how much was spontaneous and took on a life of its own? Oh, it was almost entirely a life of its own. Um, I wasn't even sure what the connectivity was going to be from station. We, NASA has built some new and, and pretty impressive um, linking computer kind of capabilities on board. But I, I wasn't really sure how good it would be. So I sort of launched with some hopes and ideas um, and, and a half-baked plan. I talked to my son saying, hey, Evan, maybe you could retweet some stuff for me if I can't retweet it myself. And he said, okay, Dad, yeah, sure, I'll do that. But as soon as I started taking pictures of the world and, and real time showing people, uh, you know, the brush fires that were going on in the outback of Australia or, or Mount Etna erupting or just the city lights of a big city, it, it immediately touched such this huge internationally resonating chord that social media allowed to feed back to me that we just started to recognize right off that this is, this, you know, it's just a means but this means is new, and it allows people to maybe uh, participate and see the world through a new lens, or at least from a new perspective. And, and it very much grew like Topsy. It grew on its own. And then the Canadian Space Agency, I think in the 146 days I was in space, they produced 146 videos of the things we were doing up there, of answering the questions of a national science competition, of uh, almost a million kids singing the same song simultaneously coast to coast. So in amongst all of the preparation work we'd done through the agency and then some of the real-time reaction of social media, uh, it was just amazing how many folks we touched and, and got to help see the world maybe a little differently and see some of this amazing capability that, that we've built. Mm. Now, there's been lots of criticism uh, on the CSA over the last few years for lacking a long-term plan for space. A government review said we've been falling behind other countries. Now the agency is facing budget cuts and possibly sweeping changes to the program. What impact will those have, do you think? Well, I, I can't predict the future anybody any better than anyone else. Uh, we have a very good man as president of the space agency right now. His name is Gilles Leclerc. He's experienced, a good engineer, but also a very good leader and a smart man. Um, and But it, you need to look a little further than just what's in the news this week, of course. You need to look at the other space agencies of the world. You need to look at the uh, economic situation worldwide. It all has to be balanced. But you also have to look back a little bit. I mean, Canada pulled out of the space station program uh, right after I was hired as an astronaut. We were, we were out of the program. We weren't even going to participate. The space station program only got approved by one vote back in the early 90s in, in the American political system. It always fluctuates. We had uh, the Columbia accident in 2003, where we were right on the cusp of, of not building station, never flying another space shuttle. We've done, dealt with huge tragedy. We've dealt with great technical complexity. 
and we've dealt with the, the regular political cycle that is normal in every democracy. And you can despair anytime you want. It's easy. There's always lots of reason to, to give up, but we don't. And in meanwhile, the space station is up there running 130 experiments simultaneously with a crew of six. We did spacewalks to fix uh, one of the problems that cropped up. It's as healthy as it's ever been. Um, Canadian experiments are running on board. Canada got to the point in our 50 years in space that now a Canadian has been trusted to command the International Space Station. We have two Canadian astronauts that are uh, becoming extremely experienced, ready to fly. David St. Jacques and Jeremy Hansen. And I think we have a whole generation of young Canadians that are pretty inspired by what it does. So, yeah, it's, it's by no means easy. But meanwhile, uh, we're doing some pretty magnificent things, and it has a lot of promise. And that's been my job for the last 21 years as an astronaut, is to help us get to this stage and keep the, door, <clears throat> keep the doors open for the future. Now, you mentioned him. The CSA is headed by an interim president. Steve McLean suddenly stepped down as president. Some have suggested uh, you would be a natural choice for his position. Uh, have you been approached? Would you be interested, do you think? <laughs> well, nobody's asked me, but it's way too soon. I mean, I'm just learning to walk. Uh, really, truly, I'm learning to walk again. It's, it's difficult. The, the readaptation process takes months to get my bone density back, to get my muscle uh, all of the fine twitch fiber and everything back the way it was, it's a matter of months. And uh, plus, there's uh, all the medical testing to get all of the information from this, this big lab rat here to get all of the data that we can. I've been working with University of Waterloo and other uh, companies to all the experiments that they ran. Um, and then, of course, all of the technical debriefings. I have technical debriefings here in Houston, uh, over in Russia, at the Canadian Space Agency in Montreal. There's all of that going on. Um, and uh, every president is an interim president. Of course, no one's president for life or something. So every president uh, serves their term and does good work. And that's what the president we have right now is doing the same thing. So I, I you know, it's way too soon to be asking that question or, or to be posing anything like that to me. I'm just doing my best to deal with what's going on right now and see what the future brings. Fair enough. All right. So what's next then? Uh, next for me is rehab. <laughs> and physiotherapy, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm focusing on. We have to, we, of course, we have to uh, write a tremendous amount of, of summaries and reports and lessons learned and, uh, and wring the most that we can of our experience on board, and that's going to be taking up all my time for quite a while here, just uh, getting the most out of this experience. I know that I am going to be uh, in Ottawa on Canada Day, and I'm really looking forward to that. That will sort of be, um, I think, I'll, I'll be fully or mostly recovered by then. And then also I'm the Grand Marshal at the Calgary Stampede. And it'll be nice to see Canada in, on the surface again in those two locations fairly shortly. But for now, it's a pretty focused and busy and, uh, and painful life right now, just getting back to being an Earthling. All right. Well, so many Canadians looking forward to meeting you in person. Thanks so much. Chris Hatfield from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. My pleasure. And really nice to talk with you as well.